All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Let's get cows moved. It's time to start the the row crop side of the farm. So let's get the cows out of the field behind the barn. We're gonna walk them over to their pasture. We got some fencing to fix. Um, and uh, yep, we've got uh, not a lot of rain, but we've gotten um, a little over two inches in the last several days. Um, so the fields are a little bit glistening up here where we got to go for the cows. Of course, you enter the pasture through a low spot. Um, seems how you always put gates in a low spot without intending it, but <sighs> so um, we got to grab a bale. So before we, they've had some green to nibble, but before we really put them on a heavy rate of green, we'll fill their tummies with some dry hay. We'll walk them across. We'll have dry hay, buffer hay out there. And then we're going to lock them on a small area because the pasture is still wet. Uh, still kind of sensitive I would rather have to just clean up like a literal two acre three acre patch uh, and still save the rest of the pasture but then we're gonna start moving them so they're only gonna be there for a couple days to, to transition them onto the green grass and then the race is on of moving that fence line across the pastures and, and pasture management season is officially underway in, in several days. Well, the bale yard got pretty empty. Um, we got these, these haylage bales are for the steers and that big stack of dry hay. Uh, we only need a couple out of that to finish our spring and then that is carryover inventory into 24, so that would be nice. Um, this is kind of a wet area, not gonna lie. We'll set one bale off right here in the pasture and then we'll get the other one up to the grinder. Remember to put this down before, uh, before I start with that dry bale of hay. <laughs> If I have him on a, a deep cut like that, he'll make a mound, a massive mound, and that bale will be gone in just a couple feet. It'll make a bedding pile. And so uh, I lift him up just a bit. And then I've, I've still had really good luck cutting the wrap and then tying the wrap to the feet. <clears throat> and then when it tips in, the wrap stays with it. Boom! Lowering it on the back side. Did it stay with? Ah, oh, perfect every time. Ah. Well, let's get that off. So we got them a little hungry and that's good. So then they're gonna fill up on this bale so when they move across the green, they can't gorge themselves. But they all walk into the lot because they heard me up at that end and saw me up there messing with a bale. Um, and it's just getting so beat up along the fence and out the gate and around the building where they loiter. <sighs> it's just getting too beat up. The pasture here is actually pretty impressive with the rain we've gotten as to how well the tractor's carrying and the water's going into the soil. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, but where the cattle traffic is in and out the gate and stuff, oofta, that's not good. We gotta get them moved. For the amount of rain that we got, considering, you know, we're not exactly in a high point of the field, um, that is 100% impressive. Um, maybe we need to do a video uh, reaching out to Larson Farms like, hey, you know, you can get smarter than your soil. Um, if I was going to talk about Larson Farms on YouTube, I would talk about Larson Valley Farms. Brad says he's going to try, whether he can find time or not, he's going to try and uh, start 
Polis thing. He's been working hard the last several years and, and improving his farm and just surviving, like all of us. I'm looking for the new little guy here. The calf is in here somewhere. There he is. There he is. And, uh, good little guy. Strong. Small. Little butter. I call them a little pot roast. They just fall out and jump up and run it. But yeah, Brad, he's going to try and start posting more often. And, uh, and then we'll get looking at some fencing repairs that we did and see if Heimerview Farms uh, check Jordan out too. Uh, just bought his first 30 acre farm and uh, he's trying to figure out what to do with his life's choices now. Um, but I think I find his journey quite interesting to, to start from zero and get your first 30 acres and try and feed your neighborhood versus just going into row crop and debt. Um, so that's going to be a fun journey to watch over the next couple decades. But, uh, yeah, so there we go. There's a whole lot of two wonderful names being dropped right there. Um, and so let's see if we can't get out of here and go finish repairing some fence and uh, let them ladies move. Get a long little doggy in. He's going to sleep good here in a little bit because he's been uh, out of the fence around this bale brush area, uh, clear to that far corner and back. And he's been all around this headland. He's just been having a heck of a good time. Sucks for us because we're running around trying to keep him safe. And, uh, but, oh well. So, little goofball. We just gotta, so we're pasture one, pasture two. We just gotta close this little spot off. This is kind of swampy right here. So I, I don't know, maybe I could have brought the post out here, um, but that's a long pull. And so like this wire here, I don't know what, what on earth happened to that pole? Um, we're gonna have to cut that horizontal and push that one down. But that line, because I'll show you the corner up there in the swamp, we can't pull this line very hard. Uh, it's always gonna have some droop because <clears throat> you don't have much clay here and you got swamp there. And I'll show you, we don't wanna pull the corner right out of the ground. Um, so I'm just trying to do the best I can. So we're just going to run three wires here, make them hot, and uh, <sighs> make them hot. Now I'll close this off. <sighs> then we'll put some strainers in this wire just to tighten that up a little bit. And then we'll go look at how we punch through them woods and see if we made Heimerview proud of our forestry fencing. We got a 40 defense in this summer, so we'll have a lot of fun videos on tying knots and stuff. But today, the only tip I can give you is always give yourself an extra, almost a foot of wire so you can make a good handle. Um, I can't do it one handed, but I can then, now I can crank him this way and it always breaks off smooth. Because if you cut with pliers, one, that's a rookie move is to cut with pliers. Um, but then you always got that sharp stub right there. Um, that's my only tip today. Give yourself lots of extra length to work with. Wire's cheap. <clears throat> like I said, we'll do fencing this summer. Well, there we go. We're tied in with power. We had three wires that punched through the woods. That turned out pretty okay. The first post we kind of had to kick out because of... Uh, swamp let's go up to that other end when it dries up a little later this summer we'll rent a skid steer with one of them heavy duty brush cutters and we'll clean all this out and you can see where the transition to grass is that's kind of where swampiness starts this whole 
woods back here. This whole corner is kind of low and wet. You can see it gets kind of a boggy, spongy material to walk on. So if it's ever wet, we'll keep the cows out from up here. All these trees starting at the green line, them can stay. Good area for the cows to kind of hang out when it gets that hot and dry season. We get down here, you don't need a pounder for these posts. You literally just stab them in. This is usually underwater anytime we get any rain. And uh, there ain't a whole lot holding these posts. So, like I said, not a whole lot of tension on these wires because I don't want to pull, pull this post out of the ground. So, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. If we're going to be moving them a little more often, so here's the little area. I'll put that dry bale up by them trees. Uh, that way they got some buffer. They got just this little area to get, they've already been on some green, so I don't think we need a whole lot of transition, and they've had high quality feed all winter. Shouldn't be a whole lot of transition. Um, but have that buffer bale there. Give them here for a few days. Eh, they might overgraze it. That's okay, because uh, then we're just getting going into the year for the stuff to grow. So it'll come back fast. And then we're going to march. So we picked up a high flow valve from ourselves, and uh, we're going to try that out. So with a high flow valve, the theory is that we can have less stock tank, a lot faster refill, and with the smaller bays, they don't come as a huge group so often. You'll see more uh, individual or a couple cows at a time. Um, and then we're just, I'm, I'm thinking of just a skid, just a skid. So then if you're gonna move them, shut the hydrant off, unhook the hose and, uh, and let them drink it down and then, and then move them. So we're gonna move them at lunchtime today, shut this off in the morning, let them drink it down, halfway down, skid it at lunchtime, you know what I mean? And so, all right, let's, let's get that bale set and get them cows out here. We got this little sacrifice area here. Um, with that brush pile, we can just cut that bale right there. They'll eat it, lay on it, whatever. But it uh, suns out, man, man. Well, we made it out here. Oh, 29. Look at that slick little yearling heifer. And she's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. How are you doing? Ah, uh, that is very pretty. And they love, they love them trees. They can scratch. Oh boy, can they scratch. They will tear that pile down by the end of summer. That will just be sticks on the ground. That bale did not stand a chance. Them cows, as soon as we opened the other end up, tails in the air, and they were running. And then they would stop and graze alfalfa, and then the run. You know, all it took was one to take off running. They got into here and they hit that bale and they beat the crap out of that poor bale. <laughs> it's kind of fun to see them. Um, I stopped here because I wanted to show you something. Is uh, last year they ate a lot of clover seeds and now we have a lot of manure pies, pates, if you will, that. Um, some of them are just covered with little sprouts like that. So that's pretty dang cool. That is really cool. Um, this is, this is nice. It's, it's a lot of work to get them here. Um, but it's nice that they're here. Now, just a little bit of labor each day to every other day, whatever it takes to to move them. I want to keep them here for several days. Um, 
so we run a few bales through them of the dry hay while they get on this grass but and then and then the race is on me and my shadow <laughs> Green light. Oh, sure, now she doesn't do it. But how 26, there's another beautiful heifer. Little yearling. Tagless mom. She, uh, she will not tolerate guff. I can go to the calf. This isn't one of them moments of she's bluffing and I'm okay. But uh, um, she makes it quite clear and she's kind of a boss cow out here. Big, a little bit younger, very healthy. But look at that little guy. Look at that little guy. And here's another little yearling. Look how slick. Ugh, just gorgeous. Yeah. It, uh, 